Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is talk to you about the normal CD function or normal cumulative distribution function that you'll find on the Casio ClassWiz calculator. This function you might find also on other scientific calculators or something similar. So do check out your manual. So what does it do? Well, the normal CD function gives us the probability that a random variable x lies over an interval a to b, where that random variable x is distributed normally with a mean mu and a variance sigma squared. Remember, the variance is the standard deviation sigma squared. Now, in order to demonstrate how this function works in various examples, I've developed this particular question here, where we have the volume of coffee dispensed from a machine is x millilitres. And it's modelled as a normal distribution with a mean of 250 and a variance of 1.2 squared or 1.44. But I prefer to just write it as the standard deviation, 1.2 all squared. And in the first example, we're going to look at directly applying this function, the normal CD function, working out the probability that the random variable x is greater than 249, but less than 251.5. And I've got a graph here that uh, sketches this out. And it's also worth noting at this point, as I'm often asked, what happens if we've got equal signs on these inequalities. Let's just mark them in. Well, it doesn't matter whether you've got equals on these inequality signs or not, because for a continuous random variable, the probability of actually equaling one of these values is always zero. So you'd get the same answer anyway. So in this result up here, the probability that x is greater than a and less than b it's going to be exactly the same whether we have an equal sign here or not. So just a note then, and that is that the probability that x equals a, or it could be b, is always equal to zero. So we could leave these inequalities on or just take them off. It makes no difference. OK, so let's get on with working out this probability using the normal CD function. Well, it could be that your calculator, when you first switch it on, isn't in this mode. Some other mode, say. Well, to get to the normal CD function, what you have to do is select the menu setup. So press that key there and you'll find it as option seven on this calculator. So if we just enter seven, it takes us to a set of probability distributions. And the one that we're interested in then is number two, normal CD function. So by pressing two here, it takes us into this menu where, first of all, it's asking us for the lower bound. And the lower bound in this question is the 249. So just put 249 in, press equals to enter it. And now this takes us to the upper bound which is 251.5. So we'll put 251.5 in, press equals to enter it, and now we've got sigma, the standard deviation. At the moment it's showing one, but for this example, the standard deviation is 1.2. The variance, remember, is the standard deviation squared, 1.2 squared. So just put the standard deviation in as 1.2, press equals and now it's asking for the mean and the mean in this example is 250 so 250 is entered press equals okay and now when we press equals again we'll get that probability that's shaded here in blue 0 0.6920 and so on okay and so if we just put that in and round it, say, to three decimal places, that's going to equal 0 
Okay, let's now turn to the next example where we've got to work out the probability that x is greater than 247.8. It could be greater than or equal to 247.8. It's not going to make any difference. So if I was to sketch a graph, it's going to look something like this, with the lower bound being 247.8. So by pressing equals on here, I go back to the statistics menu for the normal CD function. It's remembered what we typed in earlier. If you were just coming across this for the first time, you most probably have got different values in here. So the lower bound then is now 247.8. So just put 247.8 in. Enter it by pressing equals and we now have the upper bound. But unlike this example here, where we had a clearly defined upper bound as 251.5, there doesn't appear to be anything here. So how do we get around this problem? Well, you should be familiar with this particular result. And that is that if you go six, at least six standard deviations above the mean, mu, so if you do mu plus six standard deviations, you end up with virtually all of the distribution. So if I did 250 for the mean plus six lots of the standard deviation, six lots of 1.2, you'll find you get 257.2. So I'll just enter 257.2, okay, press equals. The standard deviation is still the same as before, 1.2. And if I move the cursor down to the mean, it's still 250. So I'll just press equals now and we'll see what we get. 0.966 and so on. So if we just enter that in, rounding it to three decimal places, you've got 0.967. Now I just want to show you one other thing. If we press equals and go back into the menu, I said go six standard deviations above the mean, but you can take any value you like, which is clearly going to be more than six standard deviations above the mean. I mean, suppose I took, say, 300. Okay, let's just enter 300 for the upper bound there. Let's put the cursor down to there. 300. See what result we get. Equals. Okay, 0.9662 and so on. Notice it hasn't changed for the accuracy that we're using here. So I'll leave you to experiment with different upper bounds. Just check it out and compare your answer to this. Now in the next example, we're looking at the probability of X being less than 251 or less than or equal to 251. Same answer. And if I was to draw a graph, it's going to look something like this. So just press equals here, takes us back to the menu again. This time, what are we going to use as the lower bound? We don't appear to have one. Well, it's basically the same concept as what we had here, only this time we're looking at a lower bound, which is at least smaller than mu minus six standard deviations away from the mean. There we go. Okay. And if you do that calculation, 250 minus six lots of 1.2, you end up with 242.8. So my lower bound would have to be 242.8 or lower. Well, I'm just going to take, say, 200. So let's say I put in 200 then in there. So 200, enter it by pressing equals. Now, the upper bound here was 300. We now need to change it to 251. So 251, press equals to enter it. We've got the same standard deviation and the same mean. So we'll press equals and you can see we end up with 0 0.7976 and so on. So let's just put that result in, which is the three decimal places is 0.798. Now I've got another example here 
which relates to this probability. But you could find you get similar questions in other examples relating to probabilities you may well have worked out earlier on in the question. Here we've got two cups of coffee are dispensed one after the other. What is the probability that the two cups each hold less than 251 millilitres? Well, we've just seen that the probability of holding less than 251 millilitres is 0.7976 and so on. So if I were to draw a tree diagram where I looked at the contents of the first cup followed by the contents of the second cup, I would find that the probability that both cups each hold less than 251 millilitres would be to multiply 0.7976 with itself. In other words, square it. So there we go. That would be what we would have. The probability that both hold less than 251 millilitres would be 0.7976 all squared. And that comes to 0.636 when rounded to three decimal places. Now in the last example, we've got to work out the probability that x is less than 248 or greater than 253. And if you were to draw a graph of that one, it would look something like this. So how do we go about working out this one? Well, we could just simply work out the probability of being less than 248 by a method similar to this one here, and add that result to the probability of being greater than 253, which would be to apply this kind of method. But Another way would be to realise that the area under the whole graph represents the probability of being anywhere in this distribution, which would be 1. Okay, So we could do 1 minus the probability of being in between 248 and 253. I've written it out here. Okay, So all we need to do then is just reset our calculator back into the normal CD function mode and we've got our lower boundary it is now 248 so we can put 248 in press equals the upper bound is 253 253 press equals we've got the sa same standard deviation same mean so if I just press equals now I've got 0 0.9459 and so on. So I've just got to do 1 minus 0 0.9459 and so on. And I've already done that. And you should find you now get 0 0.054 when given to three decimal places. OK, so I hope that's given you some idea now how you can go about using the normal CD function on a Casio class Wiz calculator. Or definitely check out your manual if you've got a different calculator because it should most probably have a function very similar to this, if not the same.